Have you ever wished you could make prints like these at home? So well I did and these are the prints I got from my recent photography uh, photo walks. So welcome back to another episode of Midlife First. I'm here with our intern Chong, Uncle Chong. Yes. So I have inspired social change once again and he has bought a printer. So this is a Canon G670. Yep. Uh, also known as a G650 in other parts of the world. So basically it's a 6 ink printer. It's a dye ink printer. So we're going to set it up today and uh, let's try printing. Okay, so we just got the printer out of the box. So it's got 6 bottles of ink which is full. So what we have to do is turn it on first. Do I have to shake it? No, I do not. Then now to we're gonna fill up the ink. Okay, so this one I have to open. Let me see. Yeah, uh, hopefully it doesn't. I don't think it leaks. Okay. Oh, is it going in? Yeah, it's going. The ink is going in. So apparently this thing stops once it's full, so you don't have to actually like pull it out. I think I need to clean up. Does it drip? Okay, it didn't really drip. It was clean. Okay, first bottle down. The, the pots are key. Yeah. So you can't put the wrong colour into the wrong hole. Because the grey looks like black. Yeah, and then it's really labelled then. That's yeah. The, that's the colour. So there's actually like points. La. So as you can see, there's a there's an edge here. So it, it will you stop just, you from putting it into the wrong hole. Yeah, so you just need to you just need to align the holes together. Okay, so this is a six color printer. It has a gray, black, red, and CMY. So it doesn't have your light magenta, light cyan, but instead it has red and a gray. So I know the Epson ones, they don't do this in this way. They, they have a, actually a light cyan and light magenta, I think. So this one uses gray to blend, and then I think it adds red to expand the gamut further. I kind of like the design of the system. The bottles are so far very neat. There's not been any ink that's been spilled actually. So everything has gone in, nothing has spilled out. And it didn't drip once we removed the bottles also. Okay, so Chong, why do you buy a printer? Because I was influenced by Ian to buy a printer. But also pre because partially, I do shoot for people sometimes and I realised that maybe if I was a customer, I would really like some of my photos printed. So that's why I bought a printer. And it's also just because I have a own printer and I like to replace them. Yeah, so you bought a multifunction printer because this is more for general home use where you yeah. need to print documents sometimes. But uh, my printer is not. My printer is just for photos. Okay, so a bit about why I bought my printer. So I just wanted to buy a printer so I can actually print out my shots. So I always believe that photography doesn't end at uh, viewing your images on the screen. It should be printed out so that you can enjoy it in its full glory and you can probably hang it on the wall somewhere one day, uh, hopefully in the gallery or so. So yeah, this is the, the most tactile experience you can get out of photography because w when you look at it on the monitor, it, it's just a flat image there. Um, if you hold it in your hand, it's something you can touch, it's something tangible. And I feel that uh, that's what's lost in digital photography these days. We have nothing to show for except our Instagram likes and probably the YouTube likes which uh, we need more. So please like, comment, subscribe. Done. Okay. So six inks are loaded. Then what does the thing say? I haven't set up my printer. So paint's filled with ink. Yes. So okay. let's go. It's gonna do stuff. So I think it's gonna start purging the ink. So it's 9 minutes remaining, so let's check in after it's done. So we are done, it has done the auto alignment. Auto alignment basically just means that it will print out some random patterns and then the printer will detect it itself. The good thing about Canon printers is that the Canon printers have a sensor inside the print head that detects the patterns and aligns it itself. My Epson one, you have to see which one looks the best and you've got to pick and then enter the numbers into the printer. So it's a bit more convenient here. So for the start, it didn't use up much ink. Uh, I think it used up maybe 10-15%. 10, 10, so I guess we should be able to print lots of stuff. So I brought a lot of paper and we're going to start printing. So I have here some glossy and matte paper. So let's try it on the glossy paper first because it's always advised for a dyeing printer to use glossy paper. So let's put on some glossy paper. So we are doing some printing. So I brought some of my photos over. So we're going to print them out. So I don't have a dye ink printer, so 
I'm just printing a lot of glossy photos here. Okay, so with every new printer you buy, you have to do a lot of test printing. So we have uh, need to buy a lot of shit. done a lot of tests. Uh, compared to my printer, so this printer is a dye printer. So it does the glossy paper very, very nicely. So blacks are super black. But when you print on matte, it's uh, not so super black. It tends to have quite a bit of blue cast to this. So I think we got to try to find a profile for this. The blues are overly vibrant. Now you can see this one. And yeah, this one just became blue. Actually, it's a bit purplish. So this turned out fine. This was nice. So I guess the gamut of the printer may not be so great. So you can't push your edit too much or else you will break the colors like this. So the blue just becomes a patch of blue. Printing your photos will let you understand how your edit is and whether you're pushing your edit too much or you're not pushing it enough. Uh, also, it, it trains you to, to edit for your final product, which is the print. So if you edit for your computer, you it doesn't exactly translate to what it looks like on paper itself. So you would have to change your style. Maybe you need to uh, shift the colors around. Don't uh, push the vibrancy too much because it would look uh, a bit terrible if it's blown out. It also depends on your printer. So just the skill is working within the limits of your mediums. So that's what photography is all about, working within the limits of your mediums. And at the end of the day, a lousy photo with bad composition is still a lousy photo. So no matter what you do to your edit, it's not going to make it nicer and it's so obvious when it's printed. So this printer is not bad. Thumbs up. It's quite cheap actually. So if you buy the one without the scanner, it's about... How much is it? Three ninety nine. Yeah. So it's three ninety nine Singapore dollars. So it's not that expensive. After the many prints, we actually didn't really use much ink. So I think this ink goes a long, long way. And it's a tank based printer so you can go crazy with it, keep printing, do your testing. I think it's a good printer to start out with. Uh, get your hand on printing once you get a hang of it. And uh, yeah, you can move on to better printer or you can send it out for prints and you will know what to tell the printing shop. So I think now Chong is trying to find pictures to print. So I think he enjoys the printer a lot. Yes. If you want to see more printing action, stay tuned. I'm going to print a lot more. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.